Hello, Hamlet. I want to bring you another midweek update for the second week in a row. We are going to be opening our doors to public worship at Hamlet. And uh, it will mirror last week's. So the doors will open at 1030 a.m. Central Time and worship will begin at 1045 a.m. Ushers will once again welcome you through the main entrance in the foyer and direct you to your seats, keeping with the Southwest Nebraska Health Directives. And after the service, we are going to ask that you remain seated until the ushers dismiss you. Once dismissed, please exit the church. And if you would like to visit or hang out and catch up with one another, you can do so. Just do so in the parking lot outside. So I also want to mention, always want to reiterate, if you're at risk, you don't feel well, or you're just uncomfortable, I understand, we understand, and I want to encourage you to just worship at home around a table or in your living room, right? We'll have the live stream through our YouTube channel. You can also go to our website and we'll have a link there that will take you to our, our live stream on our YouTube channel. So that's kind of where we're at. These health measures and these directions are going to continue through May. But I am honestly, anxiously awaiting some updated information for June. And as we receive new information, as we receive new directives, we will adjust accordingly and, and we will keep everyone updated as we move forward. And we will move forward. So with that said, I also want to talk to you a little bit about this Sunday's focus. If you've been following along with us for the past couple of weeks, you will know that we've been unpacking these I am statements made by Jesus in the Gospel of John. And there are seven unique statements, right? And all of these statements reveal something about Jesus and about his relationship to God, the Father. And they're like major statements made by Jesus. I want to pause for a second and really just let you know how these statements are defined and how they're distinct. So according to Leon Morris, who wrote a, a really good commentary on the Gospel of John, he refers to these seven statements uniquely in an emphatic way. And that these statements really highlight Jesus' person. And then another commentary wrote by D.A. Carson distinguishes these seven statements grammatically through the use of predicates that are attached to the, the back end of the I am. A fun little exercise that you can do uh, by reading through the Gospel of John is to go through and underline all of the different I am statements with and without predicates made by Jesus. So, now that that's kind of clarified, this Sunday and next Sunday, we're going to continue to be in John, this time in chapter 10. And we are going to be unpacking Jesus' statements using the metaphor of shepherding and sheep. How many of you remember or could offer up a definition of the word metaphor? If someone asked me to explain it about three days ago, I would have struggled. I, I, in my mind, I thought I would have been able to say something, but probably not. So if you're anything like me, you probably would have just kind of jumbled around uh, a definition. But... Uh, when I began research, I wanted to go back and look it up. So I went back to the dictionary to look it up. And just to make sure that I remembered it correctly, and just in case you were wondering what a good definition of metaphor is, it is defined as a figure of speech where a word or a phrase refers to one thing by mentioning another. It is, is not literally applicable, right? So a quick example of a metaphor comes through a few songs, right? Life is a highway. Well, life is not an actual highway. Or life is a battlefield, right? These are just, <clears throat> they're not literally true, but they help explain or understand the idea through, the, through comparison. And that's basically what metaphor is. And why do I say all this? Because as we enter into John 10, Jesus is speaking in a metaphor through the use of thief and robber, shepherd, sheep, and gate. And so now before we jump into the depth of this metaphor, because on Sunday we will start to unpack this idea, and it is going to get deep, I want to turn back to chapter 9. When Jesus heals the blind man and the ensuing confrontation that goes on with the Pharisees. Also, as we enter into Sunday's message, I want to encourage you as well to go back and read Ezekiel 34, and you'll see why in a minute. 
So setting up the shepherd metaphor in John chapter 10 is this previous interaction, right? A blind, a blind man receives sight through the works of God. Jesus literally heals him. This is another reoccurring theme within the Gospels, right? The idea of blindness in seeing. And so from here, a controversy ensues, and some Pharisees end up casting out now the former blind man and saying, would you teach us? So in chapter 9, you have Jesus, a blind man, and the Pharisees, and this whole interaction with this constant questioning going on by the Pharisees to the former blind man about Jesus and about what had happened between him and Jesus. And it's from there that Jesus will launch into the metaphor of the shepherd and the sheep and the gate. And so here's the exercise. It reminds me of a grade school uh, thing that we did when I was growing up. Right? Take a piece of paper, fold it in half. And on one side of the paper, put all of the characters that are at play in chapter 9. And then on the other side, put all of the characters that are in, in being mentioned in that first part of John chapter 10. And then if you would for me, as you've opened it up, right, draw a line connecting those characters to one another and see kind of what you come up with. Maybe who's represented within the story, in, or who's represented in chapter 10 by what's going on in chapter nine, right? And so now the metaphor is gonna take a certain shape. And then go on, and then so after that, so you've done that exercise, now go back and read Ezekiel chapter 34. And then when you're done reading Ezekiel chapter 34, come back and read chapter 9, John chapter 9 again. This is, this, is a, this is a little bit of an exercise, right? What I hope is that this exercise adds more to the person of Jesus in a manner that it, it will return the focus for you going forward to really knowing Jesus. I mean, knowing Jesus in like this deeply rich manner that his voice is clearly heard among all the other voices out there. And in our day and age, there are a lot of voices. There's 24-7, 365 voices. And they're all vying to be heard. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I walked away with after doing this exercise was conviction. Because for those of you that know me and know my title, pastor. It carries a meaning within it of shepherding. And as I read through Ezekiel 34, then read through chapter 9, and then read through the first part of John chapter 10, I had a deep sense of humility in a way that I wanted to ask Jesus for mercy in a way that I wanted to call out to God, have mercy on me. In a way that we are titled to care for the sheep, so to speak. I don't know what he will reveal to you through this, but I hope through this little exercise, what you gain is an appreciation for his voice and a desire to know it in and amongst all of the other voices. Until we meet on Sunday, I hope this is, brings some meaning to your week. From now until then, may the God of peace be with you through the rest of your week.